Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. The past few episodes we've been building out this custom color picker screen where the user can slide these different bars to build different colors that they want and eventually save these different colors into the shared preferences to basically allow some customization within the application. If we take a look at our customization screen at the moment, it's very simple with just our categories, but if we add another section in here to basically allow the user to interact with that screen that I just showed, we will be able to connect these two pages together. Behind me here you can see a simple layout that I've made. It's just a card view with a constraint layout and then a text view and an image view inside of this constraint layout here that basically mimics what these items look like here. Uh, so we have a little bit of a border color for theming and then this little icon over here that has certain coloring and then text on the screen. So basically I'm imagining a few of these listed right here in their own category or excuse me, their own section and the user will be able to tap one of those items to then go to the custom color picker. So taking a look at our controller here, at the moment I realize we are actually only listening for our categories. So we're gonna have to go ahead and update that. See here in this build models function, all that we really care about are the categories, but we can just simply go ahead and build out our little customization section beneath here, and it will appear in our layout as we would expect. So we've built a simple epoxy model here that takes in a display text, a color, and just a simple on-click listener basically to represent each one of these priority color item layouts that I've gone ahead and created. And implementing this here is pretty straightforward. We just go ahead and attach our display text, set the background color, and then a simple on-click listener. So we're gonna go ahead and add, hmm, give me a second. Okay, so refactoring this customization, I forget what it was called, but it was called something else, I think category, category entity interface. We've now just renamed this to be the customization interface, which now holds a callback here for the on priority selected. So we basically don't need to have multiple callbacks here or multiple different objects or I guess ways to kind of notify the fragment here of interactions. So instead, we're just gonna go ahead and quickly, instead of hard coding medium, we will start our fragment with whatever is passed to us. Then we can very easily delete this and finish up our epoxy controller here. So we've gone ahead and just grabbed our different variables out of our shared preferences here for the high, medium, and low priority colors. And now we're just gonna go ahead and simply add these epoxy models. Okay, and just like that, we have our different epoxy models set up. So let's give it a run. And interesting, I clearly forgot that this is in a grid layout. So we're gonna have to go ahead and modify our epoxy model really quickly. So to do so, we need to override the get span size, and we're gonna return total span count. So that instead of these, I guess the default span count is two. So instead of them taking up one span, we are going to tell it to take up two, which will then make the view take up the entire width of the screen. And as we can see here, we now have three different epoxy models that reflect exactly the work that we've done here so far. So simply adding in our stroke color on our root of the layout, which happens to be a material card view, we can then go ahead and accomplish this little outline that exists here, which is wonderful. And then when we go ahead and click a particular item here, we can see that we move to the high priority and let's make it a little orangey, like a bright orange. Go ahead and save that. And then when we come back here, now it's set to a different color, it's an orange. Now we're running into this issue here with the low priority being set to basically, hmm, Shouldn't that be zero, zero, zero? Ah, so inspecting with a breakpoint here, the low priority color is actually zero instead of zero, zero, zero. Anyway, it doesn't look very good. And the point being is that we don't have a default set for our application. As we can see here, when we're getting our low, when we get any of these, we go ahead and call this getInt function passing in the key for the shared preference value. 
When we take a look at this function here, we take a name and a default value, which defaults to zero. So because the user has never saved a low priority, we are defaulting to zero, and therefore we're ending up with this nonsense in the UI here, this white, unnecessary look. So essentially, we're going to have to go ahead and come up with colors that are going to exist as our default values. So we've gone ahead and modified these three different getters here to pass in a particular default value, which we've defined as the default priority high, medium, and low. And then I've gone ahead and just found out some three different colors that exist that kind of resemble the red, you know, caution, orangey, yellow, and then a green. So if we take a look at the application, these two colors here, the high and medium, are actually set, but the low priority here has not been set. And it comes up with this little green color instead of that transparent white color that we ran into before. To verify that, we can go ahead and open our file explorer again, open up our shared preferences, and in here we can see that the medium and high preferences have value set, but the low does not. And we are seeing that the low has a particular color set in this UI, so we are all good here. Now the next step is actually taking these colors here that the user sets and applying them to these different priorities here. So inside of our item entity epoxy model, which is the epoxy model that controls the way this UI ends up looking, all these different items here, we have a variable that we're storing called color res that is set to three different colors that kind of just come with Android and they served their purpose before, but they no longer make sense because of this customization layer that we're adding. So we can see here when the item entity's priority is one, we get the green, two is medium, and three is the high. So quickly just changing this implementation out to get the low, medium, and high priorities from our shared preferences, we can then go ahead and see what the rest of this is doing. So this is a color resource before, right? It was an actual ID to a color. So we had to fetch the color by doing this context compact get color, but we can go ahead and rip that out completely and rename this variable here to just be color and then everything will look great. So just to verify or make something obvious, let's turn this low into a more of a bluish color than anything else. Yeah, like this, like, I don't know, this, this tealy color. Go ahead and save that. If we see here our home, the low is still represented by this green color, but when we go ahead and rerun the application here, we will see that our colors have now been updated. So this is quite wonderful, right? This red and orange kind of look the same, but we definitely do not have green here on the screen at the moment. And let's say for some crazy reason we wanted to change the high priority to be black, We can then go ahead and see these updates happening in real time. So pretty interesting stuff here that we've gone ahead and allowed the user to customize their different colors. And we've kind of wrapped all of this up inside of our shared preferences. Let me go ahead and set this back to more of a normal color here. Now the one thing that we aren't doing at the moment is we don't really have full on support for dark mode at the moment. Not that the application doesn't work, but more so that our colors are not, there's only one color for the different priority levels and we don't necessarily have the ability to say use this red when we're in dark mode and use this different red when we're in light mode. So that could definitely be a simple extension that we end up adding into the application here, but for the time being I think this serves its purpose. I think that we've kind of accomplished what I've wanted to accomplish with this so far. Uh, and actually it doesn't even really look that bad, you know? I mean. You as the user are going to know what color your phone should be in, right? Or what mode your phone should be in. And therefore you can set the different colors or the priorities for those colors accordingly. So with that being said, I think that's going to wrap up the episode here. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like. And to subscribe if you've made it all the way here and notice that you aren't. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.